So if you're just joining us, welcome to our Thursday night webinar. And uh, we're going to be talking about authentic text in the classroom. Okay. Um, as I said a little while ago, this is a repeat. So if you were with us more than a year ago, you may have seen this, but uh, I've updated it in a couple of bits and uh, I think you'll find it useful anyway. Okay. As always, you will receive a certificate of participation and a webinar handout. Okay. So if you don't receive it for some reason, uh, always check in your spam because occasionally our emails unfortunately end up in your spam. Okay, but uh, you can always email me at formazione at mlaworld.com. Okay? And that will uh, also include all the information, all the text that you see, the text that we look at, links to the video and audio files, and also a lot of other links too. Um, there's a lot of uh, useful information. Remember that the certificate you receive is for four hours. Okay? This webinar doesn't go for four hours, but uh, if you really follow all the links and do all the activities, I'm sure you have plenty, more than four hours of things you can do there. Okay. Anyway, to begin, okay, let me know if you have ever used uh, authentic texts in the classroom. Okay. If so, write which ones you've used. Okay. So um, tell me what ones you've used. When we're thinking about the advantages of using authentic texts, okay, what are the advantages? One is that they're relevant to your students' interests. I mean, you could use the things that your students are interested in, whether they're web, uh, whether they're, well, as Roberta said, songs, okay? whether it's uh, any websites, podcasts they listen to, okay? um, gossip, things like this that they look at. Okay? Again, I wouldn't expect they, they're necessarily reading a lot of newspapers or magazines, but you know, these are ones that they can you can use too. Okay? Um, it, one uh, advantage is it's unregulated. It's native speaker language. It's not graded. Okay? I find with high level students, uh, it's really good to use. I often use The Economist, which isn't really necessarily an economics magazine, but it's a really good use magazine and uh, it has used a wide range of vocabulary and expressions. Okay? And so it won't just be simplified to a certain level. Okay? Um, one advantage of it is that with the internet, you can find them easily. Okay? And a little tip, if you have an ad blocker or something that can bypass firewalls, I'll let you explore that, but uh, that can get you into a lot of websites. Okay? It's up to the minute based on current events. So looking at news websites will get you things. So exactly like Francesca said, the BBC will uh, has some of the top coverage in uh, very well written English, you know, very clear. In fact, BBC website is generally written in a style that is a little bit more simple than you might expect in other websites. Okay, because it does have a uh, a worldwide readership. Okay? And obviously, in this way, students can become more familiar interacting with real English, you know, not necessarily the English of their textbook, but some things that uh, you might hear that aren't in the textbook yet. Okay? So whether it's slang, okay, uh, authentic English, authentic pronunciation, you know, not everyone speaks like uh, the, what we call received pronunciation, okay? If you go to places like Manchester, Liverpool, or down in the South, places like Bristol, okay, there's gonna be different accents and, uh, Hearing these will uh, really broaden your mind. The more accents, the more different accents they can hear, whether it's not even just in Britain, also in Ireland, Australia, America, then they're really going to get influenced by the, the language. Okay? We're going to look focus, well, we're going to focus today on three types of authentic text principally. Okay? We're going to look at one moment, news websites, YouTube. We could do a web a webinar just on YouTube, I'm sure, and uh, podcasts. Okay. As always, we have some objectives. So we want you to be better able to find authentic materials appropriate for that adaptation in the classroom, to be able to use a variety of activities to exploit material for development of skills and language, not just in the ways that you might expect, but we're going to look at some new ways that you could use them. And uh, understand the advantages 
but also the limitations of using authentic materials. So as with anything that isn't in the textbook, you need to be a little careful about what you're exposing them to because just going on the internet and you know looking for anything may expose them to some things that uh, maybe is not appropriate for them. Okay. So if we're looking at news sites, if we look at a standard approach, this is something that I would expect maybe if you've used news websites, you've done this sort of thing. Okay, So we have a headline here and an introduction of the article from skynews.com. Um, right in the, the approaches that you would uh, be most likely to use. Would you use, number one, okay, the uh, comprehension questions? So I've related these to the B2 exam or advanced exam because these are sort of uh, very common approaches. So in uh, the reading and use of English part five, give you a text with some comprehension questions. Okay. Um, what you could also do is take a text and remove some words, whether you do it by copying and pasting onto a document, or you could even go and erase them with a uh, with, uh, whiteout. Okay. Um, you could either make it a multiple choice or an open close. It's, it's a lot of preparation though. So, you know, if you're willing to do that, you know, it might be fine, but uh, it does take a bit of time. Okay. You could even cut up the uh, article and reorder the sentences, okay? Uh, reorder the paragraph. So the sentence removal is a bit more at the B2 level. At the C1, advanced, Cambridge advanced, they often uh, actually remove paragraphs. And, uh, you know, this is a useful activity. You know, it really means it's a very high level of English to be able to put these back together, okay? But, those are what we might call the standard approaches because they're the sort of what you're doing there is you're using authentic materials in the same ways that you might use materials from a textbook, okay, in the sense that you're doing comprehension or you're doing multiple choice or you're reordering paragraphs. What we're going to look at today is a bit more ways that you might not have considered, okay. So, some other approaches. On the next page, we're going to have a look at two texts from two different news sites about the same story. It's quite a funny story. You might remember this. Uh, anyway, uh, some words or phrases are underlined in the first article. There's only, I think, three or four. Okay. I'll give you a moment to find their equivalents in the second article, and if you can write them in the chat. Okay. So we have this. It's, this is the same story in the sense of it's this, about the same thing, but the one on the left is one is from The Guardian and the other is from a Canadian website. Okay? We have on the left, the expression dashed off, the word purchased, we have for a final check. And then we also have at the end, investigators are still looking for the game card. Okay? So let me know if you can find words that are equivalent to these in the um, in the text on the right, okay? Because this is a really good way. Remember that the, the internet allows you, even with Google News, you can Google a story if it's uh, you know thief in Rome Airport, okay, or Naples. Uh, uh, what is it? A uh, uh, game ticket. You would find a list of news sources about that same article and it can be really useful, okay? So, okay, we have, do we have an equivalent of dashed off, okay? Let me know if you find this. Does anyone know what I mean, dashed off? Okay. So yes, we have uh, this, some, a few people said, jumped on his scooter, drove off. In fact, both of those could be equivalent for dashed off, okay? Exactly, drove off. Dashed off, I guess, means very fast, okay? Um, purchased, what do we have for purchased? Bought, exactly, okay? So to buy, to purchase, purchase is a bit more formal way of saying it, okay? And then for a final check, okay? So pass the card to the shop's owners for a final check. Okay. 
Angelina, I don't know if dashed off is quite jumped on. It's a bit more in the sense of uh, drove off, right? Okay. Okay. I think it's the, the verify, I think it is. Uh, let me just check, okay? Uh, to check the ticket, okay? And then we have investigators are still looking for the game card. The last line, the scratch card has yet to be found. So Sonia got it there, okay? So the scratch card has yet to be found, which is the final line of the one on the right, okay? So I think you can see in that way, um, you can really just get these uh, articles. So as I said, in uh, Google News, these articles are automatically sorted by story. So if you Google something, a news item, go to Google News, which is just one of the results tabs, and it will give you these sorted by articles. So you can compare different websites. You can find one, often something like BBC is in, often in quite simple English, whereas other ones, when you go to like the tabloids, it might be the Sun or even the Guardian, which is not a tabloid, but it's often a bit more complex English. Um, that can be a great way to find the same story. Okay? A follow-up activity could be, for example, the students having read those two stories, by the way, those stories are in the handout, okay, so you will have them, the links for them, but also the actual stories themselves. Um, and they can write a third article on the same story. So they've got that information, they've got the information from another story, they can put those together and form another story. They can research the new vocabulary or idioms found in the text. Again, having a variety of different stories might see you, you know, if they don't know purchased from the context of the other story, they can maybe work out what it is. Or you could just give them one story and they could work out what it is. Okay? Um, after a quick view of an Italian news article, they must create an English news article on the same story. And we're not talking about a translation. I'm thinking a bit more in the sense you, you give them an article, maybe they can read it for homework, maybe you read it out to the class, they read it themselves, but then you collect it. Maybe they go into groups and they have to work out what they remember, okay? And then they produce it. So, you know, in that case, you're not doing a straight translation. You're actually getting them to produce it in English, but trying to, to move away from this sort of translation model, okay? Um, they could find two articles on the same story and present them to class. So you can set it as homework, you know, you guys need to find a story about uh, Ukraine. You guys need to find something about American politics. You guys have to find a sports story. And they find the two stories. So it might be great in pairs. One person finds one story, one finds another one and they read them out and see if they can find the equivalents. Okay? Um, maybe they could even find out how uh, they, what the differences are. Okay? So for example, in the, in the story we just read, the shop owner is identified in the second article. Sometimes you can see these that, you know, some stories might, uh, particularly political stories, if you go to a website like The Guardian, The Guardian is quite a uh, left leaning newspaper if you go to something like mm -hmm. the financial times or the times or uh even things like the the sun okay these are a bit more right leaning and so you get a different sort of point of view on politics so those sort of things are really good because uh you know students are i'm sure well aware of the fact that news is i'm not saying fake news but it's also a bias but are being able to identify them is a really high level skill. Okay? So that could be some really good ways to do that new sites. Okay? Speculate on the content too. Okay? Another activity, uh, thank you, Francesca. Um, another good activity could even be that you give them the article and they've got to come up with a headline for it or vice versa. You give them a headline and maybe the, 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 the first paragraph, they need to continue it. 
see. It can be even done as creative writing. It can be that you know, they can, it doesn't need to correspond to the reality. Okay? We're going to look at this. So if you've got a smartphone, if you're looking on a screen and you've got a smartphone in your hand, put on the camera and scan that, okay? and it will bring you to the independent website. If you are on one device, you can actually go just onto that uh, website, independent.co.uk. And uh, one great thing you can do this for your students is they have to find these five categories. So if you can find these, okay, remember that this will be this updates every every uh, every well every hour really, okay, every minute almost, okay. But what's the top story, okay? So if you can find it now, put in number one and tell me what the top story. You don't have to quote the whole thing, but what's the main story on the page, okay? See if you can find the title of a sports article. See if we can find an article about Ukraine, okay? So these are sort of things that, uh, you know, you can see what are the, um, the general things, okay? So someone said uh, the top article. The top article, remember, it might be a little different according to where you are, but most of it should, most of us should get the same one. Um, someone said, uh, Francesca said the terror attack. Yeah, this is actually, it's not a new terror attack. It's an it's a investigation into the terror attack a few years ago. Okay. Um, does anyone, has anyone found a, uh, a sports article on there? What's the first sports article you can find? Might have to obviously scroll down a little bit. I'm looking on my own phone. Quite a way down. Manchester United, yeah, I've, that's what I found. Okay. So something about Manchester United. Is there an article about Ukraine? Okay. Um, be a little careful. It's not necessarily. Oh yeah, it's there. Okay. Anyone found something about Ukraine? Body in the woods, maybe that's the top article, I'm not sure. I've got an article I can see that says Blinken meets Lavrov for first time since Russian invasion of Ukraine. Okay, so that's the one that I can see about Ukraine. Okay. Um, anything about America? America, maybe again, a bit further down. Oh, sorry, uh, the, the one about uh, the body in the woods, you are correct, that is a... Uh, um, about Ukraine. So, sorry, you are correct about that. Anything about America? Um, a lot about America today. We need to go down a bit further. Oh, there I go. There's one something about the GOP senators. Okay, GOP is uh, short for the, the the Republican Party, the Grand Old Party. Okay. And an article about latest films and TV. Look, I won't keep you too long on that, but uh, it's just an idea that uh, these sort of things we can uh, you can even use that. I'm sure those five points could be used in the next few months. Okay? Maybe Ukraine might need to change change out. We hope anyway if the war ends. Okay? But uh, those sort of things can be really useful. By the way, to create a QR code, it's very easy. Okay? Most websites, um, most web browsers will allow you to in the, uh, if you click on the tab up at the top, okay, where it has the address, it can make it into a QR code. Okay? These are great. You could put it on the smart board and all the students could uh, scan it. Okay? Again, tying into our last webinar on uh, using devices in the classroom, you might want them to do their own research. Okay? What is the name of the reading skill this activity is designed to teach? Do you know what we would call this sort of skill, okay, and how you could uh, develop it further? Exactly, Francesca, skimming, okay? 
So skimming or scanning, eh? So scanning and skimming are a little different, but they're sort of the same concept. Scanning generally means searching for a particular piece of information, whereas skimming often has a meaning of trying to uh, understand an article without reading all of it in detail. Okay? So Francesca, you are very close, but it's, uh, there's a small difference there. Okay? On the next slides, we're gonna have a little, little bit about skimming. Okay? So have a look at this text below and see which you think is the best title, number one, number two, number three, or number four. And again, you might have to, I'm gonna ask to, you to do it very quickly because uh, this is the idea of skimming. So is it, you can just put the number. So is it researchers prove sports are COVID safe? Virus breaks out of Liverpool school. Sports equipment presents low COVID risk. Boris Johnson infected by cricket balls. I think Antonella and Fatima have it there. Okay, so yeah, number three. Okay. Ariana, sorry, I didn't see your message before, but uh, not a problem if you've got just a mobile. Okay, we can. Uh, uh, you can do this with the, the handout later. And I think that's the only part where you really need to be using that. Okay. Um, so you're correct. It is number three. Okay. So as you can see, you might want to give students a time limit on this so that they can really put some pressure on them. They might have to take a risk at guessing one before they absolutely confirm it. Okay. But this is the sort of thing that we don't realize, but we do this all the time in your native language. If I'm looking at a website, I'm going to skim the headlines uh, so that I can decide which ones to read. Okay? Even if I'm uh, studying something, I'm going to skim it to see if uh, there's information that I need to know in there. Okay? So that's a really important skill. And again, you'll see that in some exams, particularly if you've ever had students studying for the IELTS exam, IELTS exam, the Cambridge IELTS, which is like an academic English exam, often indicates that uh, you need to, you don't, they don't give you enough time to read these in detail. So you really need to have those uh, skimming skills or scanning skills. Okay. Let's go on. Again, I'm going to ask you to do this quickly. So you, I'm not expecting you to read all of this, but which of these articles is about the same topic? See who can uh, tell me which article is about the same topic here, okay, as we looked at before. So the same topic, which was COVID doesn't present a risk, okay, or sports equipment doesn't present a risk for COVID. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Sorry, I got confused there. We're actually talking about which two talk about the same topic. I beg your pardon. Okay. This is how I changed from last year. Okay. So which two are on diff on the same topic? Two and four. Do we have this? Two and four. Yep. Okay, we're talking about the uh uh, the Australian Open. Okay. So again, I'm sure you didn't have time to read all of that, okay? but those are sort of uh, some things you can get them very quickly to do. Okay? Five is also a uh, similar one, okay? but I think uh, um, yeah, I think five is uh, slightly different. Right. Okay. So, okay. Just let me scan through a little bit quickly. Okay. Hang on. Let me just pause there. Okay. We're going to look a little bit about this uh, video, but uh, I'm just going to. Sorry, just won't let that start. After showing a short part of a YouTube video, they have to students may have to describe what they have seen. So, I'm going to watch 40 seconds of this video. 
And then we're going to answer these questions. Where was he? What was he doing? How do you think he felt? I'll leave it with that for now. Okay, that's enough. So we could ask the students, where was he? Okay, what was he doing? How do you think he felt? Okay, see if you can answer those questions in the chat. And you could even get them onto more complex questions. Why do you think he's there? Okay, what do you think he's going to do next? Remember, we're not, in these questions or these more complex questions, we're not necessarily looking for a correct answer. Okay. It's enough that they uh, start speculating in English. Okay. Um, obviously, these Mr. Bean uh, are great for this sort of activity because there's always something happening. Okay. Students are probably familiar with it. Okay. Um, but you can do this with a lot of different uh, bits of films. Um, we, we've done a webinar on uh, short films, and uh, these are great things to do. We did also there, so um, we can look at the scripts, we can look at uh, um, a, a summary of it, students could write their own short film. Okay? This is also really good practice for speaking part two in Cambridge exam. So speaking part two is usually a picture description or a picture comparison. Um, to make it a bit more interesting, you could do it as a video comparison, you could pause it at certain moments to describe it okay it really also i find that when you do a video you focus them a bit more not just on describing what they can see but describing what people are doing where they're going okay christina it sounds like you've actually seen the full video here okay because uh um this is pretty much exactly what um what where he is he's on the set of jurassic park um yeah so those sort of things just finding a video and asking some questions about it can really elicit a lot of useful language and as i said uh can be a really nice way of making uh, uh exam practice particularly these uh kind of exam practice speaking practice into something uh, a little bit more interesting okay ariana in the in the question and answer also said uh, he's there to take pictures of dinosaurs he felt very scared, exactly. Okay. So okay. Well, we won't watch the rest of that. Okay. What you can also do is on uh, news websites, they often have videos. So while they're obviously they're text uh, based and also a little bit of pictures, a lot of websites, particularly the BBC, have videos. So I've got another QR code there, and there's also the web. Uh, site there okay so see if you manage to scan that okay um tell us what you think that story was about okay let me see if i can uh copy this maybe i can put it in the chat for you yeah i'm afraid i can't but uh see if you can scan that qr code and uh see what you you can hear okay? I'll, let, I'll give you a moment because it's actually a uh, video. Like, why don't we? Uh, if I stop sharing for a moment, I might be able to share it with you. Hang on. I'll share this one with you. We can watch it together.
uh, having a bit of problems here, I'm afraid. But uh, if you've managed to get it, let me just go back and share the screen. So did anyone pick up what the uh, story was about? Francesca's got it, a free school uniform from a rapper to ease the parents' burden. Okay. I'm sorry, Paolo, if you can't open it. Um, you can look at it after after the when you receive the handout. Okay. So it was about a rapper who um, was giving away school uniforms because school uniforms are uh, usually compulsory in British schools but they're obviously quite expensive. So he was uh, sharing some of his money so that to encourage uh, poorest children to go to school. Okay. Using material like that, you would have found some non-standard English. Okay, He was speaking in uh, a little bit of a, we might even call it a dialect, a, a London uh, dialect. And so uh, you would find some non-standard English, the pronunciation of the, I think he was often saying the, instead of the, okay? um, a lot of things like that. So those sort of things, you know, hearing people speak not practice, not uh, um, speaking in a different way than they would speak with their friends, okay? it can really expose your students to some new types of English. Okay? As a follow-up, it could be great to see if students could find and describe a new story of their own. So you could say, you guys look on the BBC, you guys look on, I don't know, another website, okay? Um, and they could research a current news story. They could look at some uh, the, some videos of it. They could look at uh, some, of, some text and they could even present their own uh, script. And uh, you could even upload it to YouTube. Kids, again, as we've looked at in uh, a lot of these tech, webinars i don't think you're going to need to tell people how to how to film or upload to youtube they'll know better than us. they're they're what we call uh, digital natives okay so uh it is true angela that uh there's too many devices so whether you know whether you want to introduce these into your classes is one thing i mean you could always do this just on the interactive whiteboard okay um Another great thing is something that I love is podcasts. Okay, I'm not sure if uh, you're so familiar with these or if uh, let me know in the chat if you're a podcast fanatic like me. But they're great for students to study alone. There's a lot of podcasts that are dedicated to learning English. Okay? But, I mean, there's also ones for whatever you're interested in. If students are interested in K-pop, if they're interested in football, they're interested in a football club in particular. Okay, in that case, they're going to be uh, they're going to find a podcast that will talk to them. Okay, so here we have one. Okay, we're going to listen to a podcast with this person as a guest. Does anyone know who she is? Christina says, Aria. Can you expand on that? Okay, so oh, here we go. Yep, Stark in Game of Thrones. Okay, um, what do you think the podcast might be about? So let me know if you think you you know if we're talking about someone in Game of Thrones, what do you think it might be about? I'll let you in on some more information. That is, the title of the podcast is Table Limits. Okay, so does that change your prediction? Okay, life after life change after that role. We'll see. Okay, so we're going to listen to this. Um, I just want to make sure you're going to uh, hear this okay. okay. So, okay, let's go back yes. to... Can you hear that? Did you hear the start of that? I just want to check before I play it all. Okay. Let me know in the chat if you managed to hear. Okay, good. So, okay, let's go back yes. to your childhood. Where did you grow up? Bristol. 
Bristol. Yeah, I've got the accent. No, I know. I lost that one immediately. <laughs> Good. But now you'll start to hear it more. <laughs> now that I've told you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I love Bristol. Yeah, I love it too. I moved away maybe like four or five years ago, but I do love to go back. It's really great fun there. So who was cooking dinner? My mum. Good cook? I mean, yeah. She, I love my mum's food. I love my, like... What, she, was, what was it? She would make really good chili con carne. Mm. She'd make really good spaghetti bolognese. And I feel like those are the only TV dishes that I remember. <laughs> there was four of us, so, you know, they oh, on okay. rotation. And were you a fussy eater? No, not at all. My brother was the one that would, like, refuse vegetables, but I would eat everything and what, anything. Where do you come in the peck? Like, where? In youngest. The, you're the youngest. The baby. The yes. baby. But I was very adventurous eater when I was a kid. And did you get to eat out a lot in Bristol when you were younger? Like, what was it? The was River it? Station. Yes. That's where we went for Alex's gradu graduation. It's really I loved lovely. it. Right on the river. And oh. it was really good food. Yeah, such good food. My sister, I think, had, my, my stepsister actually, had a birthday party yeah, there. It's a great, it was, yeah. huge space. I think that was it? probably the last time I ate out in Bristol, actually. It yeah, it's a beautiful special. space. And I think mm. I bit, went there. I used to take Alex there a lot when he was at university there. And then. We went there for his graduation. There's some really good, the best. aren't there? Really good gastro pubs in like Clifton. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I've probably eaten out more now that I'm older. Yeah. But didn't really eat out much when I was a kid. Actually, well, we would order Chinese sometimes. <laughs> so what was your order for Chinese? I would always get chicken chow mein, mm. and then I would leave the bits of chicken. And my mum would say, why didn't you just get a vegetable chow mein? And I was like, I didn't know that you could do that. Mm -hmm. oh, God. So then I switched to well, vegetable I have cooked chow chicken mein. tonight, yeah. because I heard that you would, but you don't have to eat it. There's enough other things to eat. No, I eat meat when someone else is cooking. I'll happily eat meat. Are you a more, are you a flexitarian? Then? Yeah, I would say so. I'd like to keep meat as a treat and I also feel like you shouldn't eat meat unless you can cook it well and I can't cook it that well and it feels like wrong to be cooking an animal when it doesn't you're not doing it justice but Claudia got it right uh, the last one okay um, they use the word flexitarian does anyone know what a flexitarian is it's a bit of a new word right? it might be a bit of a, uh, a hint in the uh, thing with flexible vegetarian so a flexitarian is a person who is usually a vegetarian but occasionally will eat meat that is is uh not a strict vegetarian you might say okay? so someone who goes between eating a, <laughs> eating meat and vegetables okay so uh, uh you can see putting those comprehension questions to that Okay, you can make your own listening, just like you we would hear in a uh, and in an exam. Okay, yes, it is. Uh, John said it's a nice word. It is quite a nice word to describe people who are generally vegetarians, but not quite so strict. That that if they're served meat, maybe they'll eat it. They probably wouldn't cook it at home. Okay, um, these downloads are going to be really easy to find. Okay, you can also find. Uh, Often it's quite easy to download them onto your device and cut them into certain sections. Okay? There's a website that we've also put in the, uh, the, the handout where you can download Audacity, which is a free audio, audio edit. Um, so you can see the uh, example you listen to as an alternative for listening to a course book on the subject of food. So, you know, instead of going to the course book all the time they could uh you know listen to some podcasts and it might give you a bit more realistic language again pushing the students particularly at a higher level that uh they can uh, uh learn to listen maybe not expecting to understand every word okay and i didn't want to say it angela said it that the course book often is boring and you know often these course books are five ten years old you know, from the time they actually recorded the audio. You know, podcasts, they're coming out every day. You can be listening to something that someone recorded yesterday or even the same day. Okay? So what are the advantages? Okay? These are the ones I came up with. 
Okay, they've got more natural language. Uh, famous guests, okay, you can find, you can even search for particular guests. So if it's a particular football player, there might be an interview with him. And they give you an insight into a different culture. You know, they're not just from Britain, but from everywhere. Um, you can look for topics that specifically interest your students, as we were saying before. There's thousands out there. I'm sure you, know, you can find ones on uh, particular topics. Even if you're doing CLIL, it can be really useful. Okay? I, I would uh, encourage you, if anyone doesn't know, uh, there's a website, there's a BBC podcast, which is also a radio show called In Our Time, In Our Time, and uh, it's fantastic. For 45 minutes every week, guests talk about one topic, and it might be a topic of history, it might be uh, the French Revolution, it might be uh, Galileo, it might be uh, Dante, okay? it could be even something about maths or science. Fantastic. John, it's on BBC4 exactly. Okay? So these sort of things are fantastic. Okay? And you know, it's about, I've always found you come in to this 45 minutes knowing nothing, you come out knowing a lot about the topic. And if it's about a book, often it makes you want to read the book. They're more challenging and they often expose you to different accents. The course books are obviously written or recorded with standard English speakers. Uh, you're not going to hear very many different accents or challenging accents, whereas podcasts you will. Okay? What disadvantages could you see? Okay. So Christina said, uh, yeah, that's some other great things about podcasts, okay, that they have one-to-one -one contact, okay, they're both, uh, yeah, there's a lot of funny, um, you know, podcasts a bit more interesting, the voices are often a bit like YouTube videos, a bit more exciting, okay, so some disadvantages, okay, obviously they're long, um, an average podcast is probably between half an hour and an hour long, okay, so it can be a bit difficult to find a useful part, okay? Be a little careful. They're not always appropriate. If you go into iTunes, you can usually see which ones have bad words in them. Okay? They have a little symbol next to them. But uh, you need to be a little careful, okay? Um, there's sometimes the fact that there is too, a lot of choice is not always a great thing. Where to start with podcasts? It's not like you know, going to the BBC and seeing the top story, okay, because there is no um, one place you find podcasts. So, you know, you can find thousands of them, okay. And as uh, people have already said, okay, that they are often difficult for uh, lower levels, okay. Um, and, you know, again, as Christina said, they're, they're you know, students are often, uh, young people nowadays are a bit more immersive, Okay, they're not used to just listening to something. Okay, you want to watch it as well as listen to them. Okay, but those disadvantages are also weighed out by the advantages. So you know, uh, it's something you should consider. Okay, and remember that some of those disadvantages are also there for for textbooks, and textbooks have their own disadvantages as well. Okay, uh, they're great for exposing students to English as it's used in the wild, okay? So you can find them in these all these different places. We put these in the, um, uh, the, the, um, the handout as well. I mean, to be honest, you have an app on your phone, okay, where you can find it, okay? So you can find a podcast app on your phone and uh, on most audio devices as well. So you're not going to have any uh, hard find, hard ways, uh, hard, any problems finding them. To be honest, a lot of them will be on websites where you can just stream them directly from your computer as well. Okay. Coming to the end, I just thought we'd have some conclusions. Okay. So uh, remember that authentic texts are all around you. Okay. The web, particularly, you know, I remember when I came to Italy and I would occasionally go and buy an English newspaper or an English magazine. Uh, now, 
I wouldn't even consider that because it's just there on the web. So we've never, it's never been so easy to have uh, very good access to up to date English texts. I remember when I buy the the newspaper from the day before or two days before. Okay. Ajana says you can make them speech to text as well. You can, yeah, you could get some text transcription. Some webs, some podcasts even have a transcription as well. Okay. Um, they're far more adaptable, not just podcasts, we're talking about in general authentic texts. Okay. You don't have to follow the textbook. If students are wanting something to know something about, I don't know, they want to read in English about the football match. You know, remember even something like a Italian Serie A football match will be written about somewhere uh, in English. Uh, they're not graded for any particular level. Okay. Uh, Angela asks if authentic texts are also technological digital materials. I mean, they are. What we're talking about is authentic texts. I think we're talking about any texts that are not specifically designed for English language learners. So anything that isn't basically a textbook. Okay? So that leaves a lot. Okay? I mean, some things we haven't even talked about today. Advertisements could be even other things. Okay? Um, they're going to, to broaden your, your um, students' uh, knowledge of English. You don't need mass photocopies. Okay? While they might have the textbook, they can use their devices if uh, you can put a print QR code you could print one out, you could put one up on the limb, okay? you can even stick it to the blackboard if you don't have a limb. Okay? Um, remember that students are digital natives, so digital content is going to be a lot more inspiring. So even using a video more than using a picture is going to inspire them a lot more. You know, for them, uh, you know, reading off a phone is where they do their reading. Okay? where I do a lot of my reading, to be honest. We've looked at these approaches in isolation, but you could also do these in combination. So remember that you could uh, get a print story and compare it to a YouTube story or a podcast with a, uh, you know, a podcast about something, about a news item. Remember, there's a lot of news podcasts. Okay? They could be uh, really great. Uh, get a written article, recreate an interview, make an interview and a podcast into a written article. Okay. Um, Roberta, you don't need to do a, uh, a presence. Okay. If you subscribe to, if you signed up to get in here, we'll send you out the handout certificate. Okay. Um, anyway, just to finish, remember to give us some suggestions for future webinars. And I'd like to thank you all. Remember to email me there if you don't receive the certificate or the handout. Okay? So that should be there is an accompanying handout. Okay? We're going to be looking next, uh, next webinar a little early, but I think it gives you a few weeks to prepare for your, the activities. Easter in the English classroom. So we're going to look at some activities where you can uh, use themes of Easter and even a little bit of literature in there, which is one of my favorites. So if you like literature, if you like poetry, then we're gonna look at a poem that's uh, on an Easter theme, even though it might not seem to be the beginning, okay? Um, thank you again, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope to see you soon, okay? Claudia, I hope to catch you in Uxbridge too, okay? Bye, bye, bye.